Hello everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome to part 2 of Divinity Phantom. Previously we had completed the life part of the game, and now we're moving towards the birth part of the game, which deals more with psychological things, and a bit of world traveling. God has fallen. It all makes sense now. I'm back. So, if I kept going down the path, I go back to the throne. But that takes me straight back to the menu, and I emulate that story from the book. But if I reject it, I come back to here, and I get this place. God has fallen, and I'm assuming I am the god. So once again, I am amongst mortals, per se. I think this was a dead end before. That bullseye symbol again. This is... This is quite a change of pace from the previous world. Is this... Is this what the world looked like beforehand? This reminds me of a Twilight Zones episode. That one of the pig people. I believe there were pig people. It was the one about beauty being subjective. Look at the disgusting human. Go away, human being. You should be good looking like us. Like, look at me. I look like a giant jelly bean. Yeah, I look like some kind of pterodactyl deformed thing. I am the Apatoma Beauty. Oh. This must be the other freak they're referring to. Oh, it's you, Sophia. My only friend in this pathetic city. How I despise this place. To exist, we have to shed away our humanity. Turn into mere beasts in human shape. Individuality is hated as well as these who show signs of it. Why? Isn't that a sign of personality? Proof of being truly human? And we're being ridiculed, just because we're more human than they are. It hurts, not being accepted the way you are. Yet, I'm a coward. Rather than being truly myself, I tried to merge in, to become one of them. What I thought would work out, turned out to be a curse. I was no longer ridiculed. But hollow feelings started to grow, devouring me from the inside. I wanted to share my thoughts, my ideals with someone, but then I would be hated and ridiculed once again. I don't have any more strength to keep up with this farce. I've decided to just lock myself here. It's my own world, and even if it gets a bit lonely sometimes, I'm still happy, because I'm not in pain anymore. Here, Sophia, 
You can take my mask. I won't have use for it anymore. And you may need it to manage in this twisted world. I'm not feeling sad or anything. The small world is my sanctuary, protecting me from harm. I'll stay here forever, away from everyone. Perhaps what I am viewing as weird beings, perhaps they actually are just normal human beings, but it's symbolism for what they actually are, like the ugly on the inside. And now I put this mask on, this sinister mask, like it looks like a menacing mask, to blend in. See, everyone talks nice to me now. Everyone's nice. It could be a symbolism for conformity. Let's see what the ever jelly bean dudes say. I nah, don't want to go back to bed yet. Now everyone acts normal. Well, relatively normal. They talk about normal things. Trivial stuff, anyway. About being bored. About being a good mother. About being a prick. Perhaps our player character is some kind of disenfranchised god? That's... Mm. Yeah, like, like, they just talk about normal, like, oh, it's hot, oh, I wish I had money. I wonder what will be for dinner! Oh, ho, 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 ho! They drink after work. The other girl talked about how they found the personality and individualism kind of evil. Or made you a freak or something. Well, let's see what happens when I try to leave. See if that guy still stops me. No, no, he just speaks right past. I don't know if I'm actually supposed to be doing this, but we're trying it anyway. This has certainly changed. Twelve oh two two thousand twelve. They didn't notice me, or didn't want to. Maybe that's why they made me her emissarium instead of me. Made her. Oh. Belilling her was her joy, and watching her struggle was only adding up to that feeling. At some point, she managed to blend in, becoming one of them, or at least keeping facade good enough to fool them. It's facade. But as she said, it was eating her from the inside. She could either let them devour her body, keeping her soul somewhat safe, or she could save her flesh by letting her soul consume itself. In the end, she gave up on this masquerade, and was once again, like Cinderella, forced to stay away by these around her. But in contrast to this tale, this certain story won't have its happy end, not in a world like this, at least. Today was probably the last time I could speak with her, 
She gave up. That's why I decided to write that down. As memento for her, my friend. It's a page from Sophia's diary. One of teared out pages. I don't get it. It's far different from later entries. It's like written by someone else. Someone living in a completely different place than this one. Still, is it really that better, living among others? I don't know. I don't know. Whenever this loneliness is better or worse. Oh, I can see where this game is going now. Go over this a little bit after I beat the game, but I, uh... But yeah, like, that's about the conformity thing, the facade. Like, the masks are obviously symbolism for that, that the personas and faces people put on, and the one girl being surrounded with masks around her kind of shows that. I'll go more into this a bit later. I don't want to interrupt the pace of the game too much. Unless we're stuck in the elevator forever. Let's see, what clue did we get from that anyway? We got Cinderella's on entry, and we got the Sophia's diary. Perhaps the main character isn't actually a god. Perhaps she's only the god in the sense she's the god of her own mind and world. Oh, it's crack theory. So, like when she gets kind of like stressed out or whatever happens here, uh, it's kind of like her fall from grace mentally, maybe. That's some symbolism I'm playing with my head. Uh, people with masks. You see, like, the distorted people from the Everworld, I think these are the same ones as these, and I, I don't think they were actually... ...deformed, pterodactyl, without wing. <laughs> but they were actually just human beings. Just depicted as that, because they were ugly on the inside. And they also all looked similar, like, they all had the same forms, even if each form was a little different. Uh, it was a copy-paste of various forms. Are you from Darker Than Black? And is this beyond the gate? Sure seems like it, doesn't it? My! What a surprise to see a conscious being here in Void. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Karu. I was designated as a guide for these who are lost, yet haven't lost their reason to exist. Here, these who lost their reason to life are in sentence to wander blindly. Imprisoned in their own worlds of great monotony, ripped from any goals, aspirations, passions, all that until they won't regain it. You seem different, though. It seems you have a certain goal. You're looking for something. You seem to have a vague idea, but nonetheless, you can't really tell what it is. You are wandering around, looking for anything that may give you a clue, for something that may show you the way. I guess I can help you out. Pass through the gate. Beyond it, you should find that, what you're looking for. I wish you good luck on your journey. I also have feeling that we'll meet again. I'll see you beyond the gate. Now where am I? 503-2012 I've been made to start visiting psychologists in our school. 
Due to previous incidents, people were probably worried that I may do something unfavorable as well. First meeting was surprisingly interesting. I've been expecting another boring, unproductive lecture. Instead, he was asking me about my idea of life, world, society. He wanted to know my opinions about these. He was very wise and understanding. He didn't force his ideas upon me, but rather wanted to strengthen my own beliefs. I don't know if it's because he's new here and wants to show himself from his best side, or is he indeed one of few who have some value for humanity. He also seems to be interested in me for the same reason. Honestly, upcoming visits appear to be something that I'll be greatly enjoying. Is she writing about Kaoru? Sorry, I can't pronounce Japanese names very well. Kaoru. Kaoru. Oh well. It seems he was some sort of guide for Sophia. He must have been very important to her. If she wrote a whole entry about this meeting. Somehow, it's soothing to find out that there are people like him in her world. It's a nice contrast from all these wicked abominations calling themselves human. I'm making all these saves, so I can go back and look at these scenes again. For analysis. Someone was passing through this alley. Was it that shadow? It can't be. Now this, this is a little more twisted than I'm used to in this world. You know, I'm actually a little bit surprised. I didn't think there'd be so many kind of, I wouldn't say quite horror, but I figured this would be a little more, oh, this is interesting. That's very interesting. Some kind of cockroach. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome to my circus! Thank you, thank you. For this evening, you shall see a ferocious creature like nothing else. From a faraway land, one of a kind. Untamable being which only we were able to captive. Behold, the clockwork. Oh no, you're not a cockroach, you're a black man. Just take a look at this twisted creature. Doesn't it look threatening? Yes, it does. However, with my superb skills, I was able to capture this monster and make it obey all my orders without complaint. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, can you feel that thrill? What would happen if that beast would escape? You may think, but do not worry. I, the Ringmaster, am asking you all, my dear audience, to come down here and see for yourself. Come now, come, have some fun with this adorable creature. Release all your anger, all your jealousy, all your most wicked desires. Do not be afraid. Now come, my lovely audience. I'm pretty sure that's the other girl from that one vision. 
Unless it's me. How is it? The feeling of control. That feeling of cleansing oneself from all anger. There's no need to be hasty. We have whole, whole time in the world. Slowly savor that joyous feeling of redemption. There is no need to hold oneself back. They won't break. Come, satisfy your most wicked desires. This... This is something. Is it fun? Oh, indeed it is. We can continue this show for how long all you wish. Oh, my, for my audience. Oh. So, as I was saying about horror... What the... This is, this reminds me too much of a, of a girl manga, or doujin, rather. I shouldn't have done that. I don't really know what I've done. Has she gone and massacred the audience? Oh, it seems so. Sophia. I don't know how that linked to the rest of the plot. Perhaps that's something that's gonna have more connection when the full game is done. Last incident didn't learn them anything, as expected. It seems that their egoistic nature is stronger than feeling of guilt. Thus, they found themselves another victim girl that doesn't really stand out. She seems calm, shy even, all alone in this wicked place. She was an ideal candidate for the next target of violence and ridicule. The situation started primarily two months ago. At first it wasn't really unnoticeable. At first it wasn't really noticeable. I guess they wanted to check out for how much they can let themselves. It didn't took that much time, until they could do literally everything with this poor girl. She was obedient. She was subdued. She was stripped of her will. Waiting for opportunity to change the world instantly is just an excuse. If you want to change everything, start from small deeds. Even the smallest change is important. You'll gain trust of others, and they'll be willing to help you. Achieve your dream. 
That's what I've learned lately. Last time, I watched my friend slowly being eaten. I did nothing back then. I had no idea what to do. I still don't. But this time, I'll do something. That was my resolve. I started to talk with the girl. She didn't trust me in the beginning, but as I was constantly showing her unconditional support, she slowly began to open herself to me. Then one day, something crucial happened. They wanted to satisfy their urges on her. When I get there, however, I saw her fighting back her oppressors. Because she wasn't alone anymore, she became more confident. Even if I wasn't there for her all the time, she knew that if something happens, I'll try to help her. With this little support I was able to give her, she changed so much. It was such a beautiful sight. After that, she wasn't victimized anymore. She knew how to fight, and because of what she went through, she was making sure that nobody in her surroundings would go through the same. Amazing. Humans can be amazing. That world was indeed corrupted, but there was still some hope. People could fight that. Was that why they were being tormented? Because the rest was afraid that they could fight back. Clockwork was actually far stronger than her oppressors. But if that's the case, why don't they resist? Why they subdue? What do they lack? like a replica of the first room. Oh. It's the rooftop from Madoka. The one that Sayaka was always on. Monaco, rather. Hello there. Good day. My name is Mylene. What is yours, if I may ask? Sophia. Sophia? Oh, what a lovely name. Well, Sophia, as you're here already, why don't you like to stay for a while? I'll prepare you the most finest of tea. We could even have a little tea party, if you don't mind. I... I don't mind. Oh, wonderful. I'm glad you accepted my invitation. I haven't got any guests for a long, long time. Nice eyes. You know, this is off topic to the current situation, although it has to do with the game. I'm really surprised how much there was done so far for this game. Uh, um, once you kind of get through the city and kind of get through that part, there's just so much there. It's almost like a visual novel. Pretty much a visual novel. Actually, it's not that I don't have many guests. People pass by here from time to time. However, they always turn my hospitality down. Well, I guess I may seem intimidating to them, yes. I mean, you could consider me a monster. <laughs> but on the other hand, I am very happy you accepted my offer. I am honestly very, very glad. Your posture also calms me. People usually seem very... Hmm, impatient when being around me. It's hard to describe. It's like they want to go away as soon as possible. It somewhat saddens me. I may be quite different. But I also have feelings, certain needs. Need for company, for example. You know, it's really painful when you're dealing with something. You'd like to get some aid from someone, but there is nobody to help you. You're left all alone, forced to deal with your own problems by yourself. After some time, you start to forget how important support from others is. 
you start to believe that you can deal with everything by yourself. You begin to distrust others, even these closest to you. You become obsessed about it, about trust. But you see, people are quite mm, selfish. They could easily backstab you, talk badly about you behind your back, do things unfavorable to you. It is obvious to not put too much faith in them, in all of them. They may betray you at some point, after all. That, at least, is the reasoning of someone who has all alone for a long time. Someone who has all... Ooh, someone who has been all alone, it should be. Oh, sorry for boring you with such gloomy thoughts. I just rarely have occasion to speak so freely with somebody. To speak with anybody. <laughs> anyway, if you'd like, why won't you stay for a night? I have many spare rooms in my house. It is quite big a place, after all. Far too big for a single person. I would also fancy some company for quite longer. Sure, that sounds fine. Does it? It pleases me greatly. Well then, would you be willing to go to sleep? Just go to the empty room on the first floor. So, we've definitely gone from what was, I assume, some kind of religious thing, maybe like creation story, and it's actually turning into about conformity, about uh, isolation, depression, uh, personas, how people perceive you, yourself, how people interact with people they feel are different. Uh, it's pretty much a story I'm pretty much feeling it's a story of a neat at this point. And there's a lot of imagery here, uh, dream imagery. There's a lot of eyes on the wall. That really reminds me of some dreams. I have quite a few dreams, actually. But that's something I'll go into later. Oh, well, that was a good nap. Oh, boy. I had a feeling this was gonna happen. Frankly, I'm actually not that worried. I mean, she seemed like a nice enough person. Even if the room and the house turns into some twisted horror thing, it's... No, not evidence of any wrongdoing or something. But that is. That one definitely is. Corpses. Yeah. But, you know, maybe these people deserve to die. Maybe, um, jump into conclusions. I, I can't assume all monsters are bad people. Perhaps just misunderstood. Well, it's been a nice day, but it's time for me to go. Uh... Hello there. Thank you for letting me stay. It was a very nice visit. But I must be going, and I notice your corpse is in the attic, but I will not make any judgment on that. So, you've been on the second floor, hmm? I thought I made it clear. These were the ones who tried to run away. These who betrayed me. And now, you... What should I do with you? Would you run away? Afraid of that monster? Like everyone else? Why should I? I'm going to massacre you. Are you not afraid? You're going to massacre me. Why? Because you've seen my monstrous side. I'm not going to judge you, basing on what others may think or say about you. In my eyes, you are definitely not a monster, which you think you are. 
Despite what you saw, you had your reasons. Perhaps they deserved it. We all make mistakes on our own course of life. I won't judge you. I won't judge someone because of their past. What matters is how we act towards each other. And I think you're more human than these who claim such titles as hers. I. Who are you really, Sophia? I don't know anymore. What I know is, is that you aren't a monster, which you believe you are. And this. This was unexpected. You really are different, Sophia. My friend. You know, I find it so eerie that she emulated my sentiments that I was going through as I walked through the house. <laughs> and I wasn't just saying that in kind of like a funny, sarcastic way. I actually was faking some of that in the back of my mind. Because the cliche is, oh, it's an evil person and she got to murder you and you've been trapped. But I didn't think this game was going to do that. I don't, I don't see that pattern here as so I thought, well... She seemed like a nice enough person. You know, maybe she has her reasons. I don't know. But I have sometimes twisted logic like that, so, you know. A peculiar character get my attention. Lately, a girl that seemed to be completely alienated from others. It seemed as nobody has even acknowledged her existence. Rarely anyone spoke to her. And when someone did, it wasn't pleasant. She wasn't, however, oppressed by everyone. It looked more like they were afraid of her. They were saying like she's some kind of monster. I can understand that. However, if not for that facade, she'd be devoured by them long ago. That is her way of protecting herself. Somehow, I managed to speak with her a few times. She indeed seemed quite hostile at first. That changed quite quickly though. When she realized that I mean no harm, she opened to me. I must admit, I admire her strength for keeping that mask up for so long. As I learned later on, it was like a double-edged sword. It protected her, but it also ate at her from the inside. Living solitary life, being afraid of others. Some people may not need help in protecting themselves, but they may seek something else. Someone to depend on. So, Mylene was yet another victim after all. She wasn't abused in a way. Cinderella or clockwork was, but they still managed to harm her by forcing her into solitude. If she would lower her guard, she would probably go for the same thing as these two before. What kind of world was it that no matter what you did, you couldn't avoid cruel fate? See, I don't think she was actually a monster murderer. It seems all these stories and imagery are symbolic. They're like symbolic for psychiatric cases or something, or different forms of depression or isolation or what people go through and things like that. Cryptic metaphor. Oops. Okay, I can't go in this one. Maybe that's where these end for now. So let's go back outside then and see what we discovered. But these were very cool. Very, very cool. I mean, I'd, I'd like to go into the psychological side of this. Uh, I apologize if you came watching this hoping for a funny Let's Play. But this is a pretty straight game and I really haven't felt like making too many jokes. Villains here. I mean, I have a really good concept of where this game is going now. Uh, as I was about to say before, I cut myself off. There's certain things I can't go too much into, because then I would start to get a little more... a little too personal. But I'll go into some of the dream and some of the imagery later.
We're just gonna follow this trail in reverse. Seems like the smart thing to do. Maybe. this belong to? To that shadow, perhaps? Let's see. It's 2017. This is the date when world ended. I don't have any idea how many times it ceased to exist before, as I've just slightly regained memories of the past. The true past. However, world ends and begins as in cycle, and this will continue for as long as there will be ambitious people that seek power and desire to satisfy their curiosity. When she wakes up, everything ends. World disappears until she won't dream it again. This time I was too late. I remember too late. I have to protect her. Her and the whole world. Until I won't find a way of breaking the cycle of madness. This is the first step. This diary. With this entry, I won't have to waste time in recalling my purpose. I will also write down circumstances that lead to apocalypse. So I can think about ways of preventing that in the future. This time... A group of scientists decided to switch the so-called God Entity. They found her in White Desert, or so media told. They brought her to their facility and did something that made her wake up. 2013, we've gone back. Oh, I see. It's looping. Oh, we really are Monica. Again, I was too late. This time I don't even know who and where I found her. I can say for sure that it wasn't on White Desert. In this world, there wasn't even a place named like that. I managed to find her this time. Instead of searching on deserts, I've started to search for ancient towers and their ruins. I wanted to take her somewhere safe, where nobody would find her. I've pulled out Blade from her chest and here I am. I am the one who destroyed the world this time. 2009. As predicted, she was resting in one of the ruins of the ancient tower. I set camp there, and started to guard that place. For a long time, it was going smooth, but one day an army found the tower and insisted on research. <sighs> they found her, and, suspe and suspected me for murder and hiding the body. They tried to take her out of the ruins and, well, they destroyed the world. 2020. I was quite lucky this time. I've managed to work for Eva Labs. Like scientists from previous world, they also wanted to find God Entity. Because of great conflict between church and science world, they wanted to disprove. Once and for all, that being like God doesn't exist. In this world it was said that God resides somewhere on the earth. They wanted to find it and count it as another race. We found God a few years later. I insisted on just leaving her alone not touching or moving her anywhere. They had a different opinion on that case, so... I found her tower quite fast this time. It was in the middle of some ruins. I moved inside one of the abandoned houses and started to guard the place. I'll save you, Monica! This time, I didn't even manage to see through another world's end. Some bandits wanted to raid the tower and take all the treasures they find there. As I was trying to fend them off, one of the bandits shot and killed me. It's actually good that I kept my consciousness even without perishing together with the whole world. This means I can be more daring while trying to protect her. World ended. What does that mean? So where am I now? Is this the new world or something else? And who wrote this? Whose memories are these? Why is that person so focused on finding God? It doesn't seem to be just about stopping into the world. It looks like this person somehow related to that god. I'm so confused now. So we're definitely back to a religious theme, so maybe it's both. Maybe it's both a psychological thing and a religious thing. Mm -hmm.
Now what's going on in here? Is that the shadow person? The homunculus? Isn't that this shadow? It looks somehow familiar. And it didn't disappear this time. Why? I must not forget. I must remember. I must recall what, who I am. I am Salomon, human, 28 years old, white hair, a bit long, white skin, orange eyes, well built, but not bulky. Was a doctor, worked at school. I was wise, that's what others respected me for, and seek my guidance because of it. I seemed to be nice and kind of funny. I was understanding, people could depend on me. I must retrieve these traits. I must be who I was before. I must make her remember me. Recall the past. She can't see me until I won't become myself again. Now I'm just a stranger for her, and I can't exist. What's this about? Is this maybe... Is this the person who's been making the notes and then trying to save the world? Is that Salomon? Why do I have this strange feeling? Like, I've seen this before. <sighs> My head... It hurts. Who... are you, Salomon? I can't remember, but you're... familiar. Okay, so that's definitely a guy. That means I'm Eve if we go by that logic. Oh, Lord. A note? In a place like this? I know what this place really is. I am. Was part of it, after all. It's void. All these buildings, sky, everything that appears here is barely a void shaped into that state. Really a raw material. When she creates new world, Whole void serves her as clay, mass, to create wherever she desires, to create new world in the way she wants. Every creation, building, plant, or any other living organism is all in the void. It is part of it. It is void. There is no personality in void. No I. There shouldn't be, at least. But here I am, a creature of void. Somehow I gained or regained my own self. How? I wonder. Maybe because I had my will strong enough to survive, right before merging into that mass. Or maybe I was not supposed to perish. I was supposed to survive. Maybe both of these things made me remember who I am and let me get my own separate body. However, no matter what, I am still a body made of void. Void. I've read about that in one of Sophia's entries. Is it somehow related? A place of endless wandering on never-ending plains of emptiness. So I'm also in void, right now. Was I also part of it? The path is gone. So that's everything for what's currently playable in the game. Um, a couple of those things, like the last hotel room that we went to, were just added very recently, I believe. So I'm going to go over the plot and some of my theories a bit, and then after that I'll go over some other things related to the game. As I played for the game, I thought first it was maybe a religious game, and then I kind of shifted to maybe everything symbolic, and there's just no religious aspect. That's kind of the fool you. But then I kind of rebounded a bit. I checked out the creator's DeviantArt, and it turns out a lot of these characters, pretty much all of them actually, are original characters of his, and they do have backgrounds written down there. So, they do have some established canon that this is leading up to, like this is probably a prequel to whatever storylines he has in his head for these characters. 
but I also think, I think it's a bit of a duality here, that you're supposed to take part of it literal, like the god thing and the, uh, the things you see in the kind of elevator, uh, hotel rooms or whatever. Like, you're supposed to take the imagery literal, but at the same time, there exists a kind of parallel version where they're just symbolic of something. And I think that's what the diaries you read after the events happen represent. And I think Sophia actually makes a comment about that, how one thing seems to describe a similar event that's almost like in a different world or something like that. And I think, uh, Keoru, like, that character... In the one, some of the books, he comes off like a psychiatrist, like he's some, some kind of mental, mental health, maybe like a guidance counselor, or, you know, someone in the city of points or whatever, to help these people, like he's working in a ward or something. I think his kind of, let me I'll describe this. It's a bit like um, the visual novel Yumineko, or Yumineko, I don't know how you pronounce it. And I'm pretty sure, I think I saw on the DVR that the creator is a fan of that. So you have to look at that story, and that story had a kind of duality where you had the grounded, real version of events and people, but you also had these kind of magical, out-there kind of versions. And the magical, out-there version both happen, but the magical version and the real version were kind of symbolic of each other, essentially. Like, if someone shouldn't have a magical spell in real life, that would have been just like someone shooting a gun. But both actually happened in a weird way, see what I mean? Like, Keoru's, his magical version is like he's some kind of traveler character who's kind of controlling the gate to the egos and worlds. And his real-life version is just he's some, he's some psych guy. So I think that's what's happening there. Another little thing, um, Mylene, the monster character, uh, I actually figured this out after I thought about it for a second after I finished playing the game. She is a reference to a kind of urban myth, uh, kind of ghost figure that has a glass glow smile. I'm not sure if she's exclusive to Japan or not, but that the way that goes is she's like, Oh, you think I'm pretty, huh? We'll take a look at this. Then she kills you, you know, after you see her smile extend all the way up to her face. There's variations on it. Sometimes she's like holding flowers in front of her face or something before she reveals herself. But she's usually wearing a hat like that. And he does actually have some art of that character with the full smile going there. And I never, I mean, a joke saying, make sure you don't make any references to Slender Man. But the creator is, I'm, Going by, like I said, I went to his DVR, and going by that, I, I think he is actually a fan of Slender Man. I'm not sure about the games, but maybe the original story. So that is actually some, there is some influence there on that. So that's, we don't have to actually outrule that completely. Specifically with Keoru. Because he does look a bit like Slender Man sometimes, and some of that art. So yeah, we got the psychological side, and we got this god side. The god side pretty much only relates to Sophia and some other character that has not shown up yet, or hasn't really gotten involved. But it definitely seems the sword was pierced in her chest, and it's a bit like Ava, where you pull out the lance of Longinius, and then things go to hell, and everyone turns to Tang. Like the story in the book, you know, remember the story in the book, it mentions the character, the girl, or the god, or whatever, comes down from the tower to see her people, and then like, no one's around, and she's like, oh, well, I'll just go on back. And then when she goes back, she hears everyone again. Well, that's paralleling, or rather, that's actually just outright telling you what happened to this place. The character, uh, I think it's Sophia, it could be someone else. Sophia could be a separate character, and we're just kind of interchanging names right now. She basically came down from the tower, was woken up, had the sword pulled from her chest. She comes down to the earth, or whatever the hell. And hey, no one's here, I'm wandering around the city, I'll just go back to sleep. And that's like that one kind of incomplete ending. That's kind of continuing the cycle when you get that incomplete ending. That's what I'm assuming. And all this happens again. And then she wakes up at some point for whatever reason. Someone pulls a sword or someone wakes her up. Everyone goes to Tang. And she wanders around thinking, what the hell happened here? And then, you know, eventually she gets back to that tower, goes back to sleep. And I'm assuming the full game and the actual true ending will deal with kind of breaking that cycle, maybe. 
And the character does, the creator does mention that the third part will have you playing as someone else. And I'm assuming you'll be playing as, uh, who will essentially be the equivalent to Homura from Maho Magica Madoka, whatever the hell. <laughs> like, pretty much. I also think this is a bit of a superhero origin story a bit. And that the main character, going by the creator's original character page, she has the power of over voids, and I think she's gonna, like, kind of tame that power here. And I, I think she, while she's the god of this world, I don't think she may be the actual god. Like, the only one. Maybe just the god of this dimension. But there might be other ones that she maybe kind of slid between. And maybe that's what some of those hotel room stories were about. That's my theory, anyway. So I think that covers about the plot. I Let me go over the themes of the writing. Um, I mentioned, like, it has a lot of dream imagery. A lot of it has to deal with... Like, clockwork is pretty much probably equivalent of a uh, representation of a, like, a rape victim, abusive relationship, all those kind of things, and about stuff like that. And the creator's even art page, assuming he keeps these profiles consistent with his characters, actually pretty much confirms that. And she's also designed to look really kind of evil cool looking, so. Mylene, I think I forgot her name now, the Glasgow smile chick, she's representative of pretty much hikikomoris and needs. People who isolate themselves not to get hurt. And even the first character, the Cinderella, was also representative of that. Someone who's been living out on the outside of the world, putting on a mask, kind of blending in and with society and whatnot, but then eventually getting tired of it, burned out from the inside, and then you retreat back into being a hikikomori, or a need or whatever. And then, of course, hikikomoris and needs are usually considered freaks, so that's where that angle comes in. Oh, one more thing I actually figured out. The... Shadow goes around saying, don't look at me, and then it gets very angry when you do. And you, if you actually go to the clone tube or something, you see that diary, and it mentions about the, like, rebuilding their personality and their memories or something. And then I think, it, I can't remember exactly, but I did mention something about not being viewed before this is done. And this is probably a bit of a, it's a bit of an ego thing. And how uh, it's kind of hard to put in the words. There's some books and some writings that kind of deal with that subject matter, but it's about how, like, something if something is observed, kind of thing, then it you know becomes. So, when he's observed in his shadow form, before his ego has formed and he's built up his shape in this kind of tanged world, and use these memories like the, he did he's i'm assuming the this kind of clone or whatever um doesn't have any memories so it requires this book and these kind of established memories to reinforce the original character and when the main character observes the shadow form wandering around and when the main character like sees the shadow form wandering around and observes it and even talks to it it's kind of thrown a wrench into that mix of the ego building so it um that's that's going to be the form it takes. I mean, that's not going to be... It's probably going to change as the game goes along, but it's screwed things up for that person. And that's pretty much it I think I have to say about the game for right now. I might say a few more things before I sign off as it comes to mind. So, if you don't want to hear about more other subjects that are a little bit off-topic to the game, more dealing with um, dream imagery and like things I've experienced, then leave now. But I did mention during when I was playing that, like, the dream, like, the, uh, like, the Black City going on and on, uh, I think I actually had dreams like that. And I think it's kind of typical imagery, it's not entirely uncommon, uh, I think I've talked to people who've had similar dreams like that. But yeah, I've had, like, Hub City type dreams where you get lost in the city and it loops on and on. And you wake up in a perfect replica of your house and you step out the front door and you're in this kind of city you always keep visiting and then the door behind you disappears and you wander around for a long time looking for something. That kind of thing. And then maybe you occasionally meet some lone person who leaves you cryptic metaphors. And the other one with the eye thing, uh, where you walk up the, where she walked up the abyss 
I got a similar one to that. A little different. No one like Abyss stuff, but instead it was a, uh... I think it actually looked kind of like a uh, Salvador Dali painting. It was, a. Uh, it was a long brick path floating over a great sand dune desert full of terrible serpents and beasts that would interchange through the sand and stuff and it would devour your soul if you fell off the path kind of thing. And at the end, the path ends up at a, like, a kind of tower and also floats over the land. And then you climb up the top of the tower and above the tower is this it wasn't really a tower, it's more like a... It's hard to describe, more like just... Just towered up like a wall kind of thing. And the top of the tower, there's a... There was like a eye opened up, and it was like the eye of God, and it shone brightly, and... And then it blew my mind. And then I was forced to wake up because I got a real bad headache because it was too bright. So yeah, I'm saying it in a kind of funny way, but yeah. See, dreams like that, and I... If you look up uh, religious history and dream history and uh, a lot of things like that, that was a common imagery. The eye being the eye of God. Uh, it's very common in depictions of God, that you see the eye up in the sky kind of thing, and that's what that kind of represents in the game, probably. The game LSD dealt with a lot of uh, dream imagery. Um, they had a very similar structure to the hub city, then other things leading from that. And it actually had a pretty dreamlike, realistic structure. And LSD had a thing where, if you even just so much as walk into a wall too long, you'll kind of warp to another part of the world. And an open world and stuff. Parts of it would change every time you reset the world, which was supposed to simulate you waking up and falling asleep again or something. But it was, it was kind of an accurate thing, because that happens a lot in dreams, where you do that kind of con quantum shift thing, if you, like, walk into a wall or whatever the fuck. And it also had the hub city, had the recurring things you see in dreams and stuff like that. Very cool game. I actually have a video of it on my channel. Very old video. <laughs> very old mic. Very bad quality. I may replay LSD when I am one of these days. I, uh... I may also make a video of... Well, I probably will. Not anytime soon, but of, uh, Yubiniki. And I've wanted to do that, actually. And then when I do that, I'll go get more into dream symbolism and imagery. But I don't want to bore everyone just yet. Oh, before I actually go while I'm carrying on, there actually was a couple more dreams that were similar to mine. Um, quite a few of the things in the game. I think even when I played LSD, I kept finding things that were similar to dreams I had. Like the, uh... Definitely the figure, like Keoru. I think a lot of people have dreams where they see a person like that. Some kind of figure they talk to. And the, even the glass glow smile chick with the roses, I mean flowers, well, I don't know what type of flowers they were. And the house and the things turning suddenly evil and I'm going to eat you if you run away of uh, scene. I've actually had dreams like that. And that's, like I remember, I, I mentioned when I was playing that I, the game was kind of emulating my logic. And that's actually the logic I applied in my dream to those kind of situations. I think I'd pr probably apply the logic to the real world, too, because, I mean, if you wake up in a house, and this house turns out to look a lot different than it used to be, and you find corpses in the attic, then you're confronted by the person who owns this house, and she's got a big bloody tooth smile, you don't exactly go, OH MY GOD, and run away. You're probably at their mercy, and you pretty much want to talk and be logical about it. And then hope that, you know, they're not going to eat you. Assuming you, you're a nice enough person. That's how I kind of handle things, though. I should, not everyone would think the same way, but, you know, whatever. Anyway, I've read it on too long. If the creator actually somehow manages to come across this video and actually hears my rant about theories and dialogue, then, uh, feel free to leave a comment and tell me if I'm completely off base or... Your reading of the dialogue really annoyed me. Or things like that, you know. I'd be interested in hearing how uh, you think about my theories. So yeah, anyway. Thank you all for watching me play this game, and I hope you, uh... It's not... It's not really well known, from what I can tell, aside from, like, on 4chan or Oboa-chan or whatever. And I hope I was able to bring some attention to it, because I think it's pretty well done for what's done so far. There's definitely a lot of potential there for this game. So I'll see all of you later. 
And like I said, thanks for watching.